Good evening. So we're very excited to have you here on our campus at Utah Valley University this evening for our event. Um, uh, our, we have a series called the Utah Women's Leadership Speaker and Dialogue Series that is part of the work that we do uh, with the Utah Women and Leadership Project. I'm uh, Susan Madsen. I'm a professor of leadership and ethics in the Woodbury School of Business at Utah Valley University here. And I also founded the Utah Women and Leadership Project and direct, uh, directs still that project today. And we're just excited to have you here. Um, just. Uh, one slide about what we do at the Utah Women and Leadership Project. Our mission is to strengthen the impact of Utah girls and women through informing, engaging, developing their voices, their confidence, influence, and leadership. Whether they're girls or whether they're a little bit older like me, not too old, but like me, but just a slightly a little bit older. Um, so that's our mission, and we do that through doing a lot of research uh, events and speaking, other resources, and community outreach. I am excited to introduce uh, President Matthew and First Lady Paige Holland. They have been here for, you, you are finishing your eighth year, correct? Ninth? Oh my gosh. But they, from the, from the day they came to UVU um, nine years ago, they have been major voices and supporters of women. I'm so happy for all of us to have the opportunity to hear them, so welcome. Wow, what a glorious sight all of you are tonight. Um, I'm just so happy to be here with you to talk about my thing, as we decided we call it, women in education and women in leadership. And um, I want to first start by thanking Dr. Susan Madsen for once again pulling together this wonderful night to talk about topics that are just so vital to women in today's world. We are very fortunate to have her here, and we are so fortunate to have all of you here. So let me start by welcoming you to Utah Valley University. We're so happy you're here. Um, this campus really is a very special place for me and Matt. Um, as Susan mentioned, we came here almost a decade ago, and um, we, it, which is really hard to believe, until you look at this photo which I posted on my Instagram today as I was going through my pictures because I couldn't believe how young my kids were when we first came here. That was taken in the backyard of the president's home. So uh, nine years ago when we moved here, we were in what I considered to be the golden age of our family life. Danny, the little guy on the far side, was four. And Grace, the little gal on the other side, was six. Mitzi was nine, and our oldest son, who's now serving a mission, Jake, he was 11. And um, so when I say it was kind of our golden, our golden age of family life, it was, you know, our, our youngest children were out of diapers, and they were saying all sorts of funny and adorable things. And our oldest children still liked us. So we, we thought that was a really nice stage of life. And nine years ago, Matt's hair was brown, <laughs> and I want you to know he's worked very hard for all of those gray hairs. He's earned those gray hairs here at UVU. And I could actually climb a flight of stairs without orthotics or extra oxygen. It was really nice. And we've been through a lot since we've been here at UVU. We've gone through good times, and we've had some hard times, mostly good times, mostly wonderful times. We've had breakfast with Jason Alexander from Seinfeld. Oops, here we go. There we go. He came to our house. You may not recognize him with a little more hair on top. And we've had dinner in the British Parliament. We got rid of one dog while living here, and we acquired another. Let's see if I can. So that's the first dog. That dog's name is Robin. And um, I might just add that Matt insisted that we get rid of this first dog because it refused to train. And it began causing a lot of troubles at the house. And it cried at night. And it just was kind of difficult for all of us. And, and so when Matt finally just said, kids, it's time. We've got to get rid of this dog. Our youngest boy, Danny, just sobbed and sobbed. And when I finally got him to stop crying, he looked up at me and said, mom, when dad dies, can we get another dog? <laughs> yeah. 
So you can see what I mean about the youngest kids saying funny things. So we, did, we didn't wait for dad to die. Mom did her homework on really trainable dogs. If you need, a, if you need to, an inside scoop on what kind of dog to get, come talk to me. This is, this is Hank, and Hank is now much bigger than that. But um, we've had lots of things going on in our family life and raising our kids on this campus. And we've, we've seen a lot of changes and pers- participated in a lot of initiatives and projects here at UVU, which we've loved. But I have to say that of all of the things that I've been able to be part of, nothing has been as gratifying to me as the work that I've been able to do with Matt and with so many at UVU, starting with Dr. Susan Madsen, to create opportunities and for education and growth for females, both young and old, and in between here at UVU. That, that's a picture of, I think, the first day we came to campus. Um, and, and right about that time when we first came, I wondered about the role that I would play here um, in supporting my husband. I knew that because my kids were so young that much of my time would need to stay focused on our four children to make sure that, that my sons and my daughters were having the best educational and growth experiences that they could have. But I also knew that it would be important for me to be a partner with Matt and to help um, contribute and to help the university progress. And there were many ways that this could have happened, but as I've learned in life, whenever possible, it is best to follow your passions. So when we arrived and discovered that not nearly enough young women were coming to UVU and finishing their degrees, um, I sort of had my answer as to what I was going to help out with. I am absolutely passionate about women and education. I know how important it is and what it means for a woman to have a college education. And I know how much my college degree has helped me. It gave me confidence and opportunity and security. When it was needed, it opened unique and rewarding professional opportunities. As a mother, I use my college degree every day. It's been a daily source of resource of understanding and of strength. It's helped me in the schools with my kids and to to help my kids with their various papers and projects. And in my role at the university and in the community, which is a role that I never even considered as a possibility when I was a young college student, my education has proved a vital support and guide in everything that I do. And when I look at the world today and I think about my own daughters, I can only say that if my college education has proved so important to me, it is even more critical now in the day and age in which we live. The world is more competitive, it's more complex, and it's more demanding than ever. And it's also more exciting and filled with more opportunity for women than ever before. The bottom line is this. It has never been more important for women of this world to fill their lives with learning, to fill their lives with skill development and positive examples of accomplishment. This is, again, why I appreciate so much Dr. Madsen. She has worked so hard to show the women of this community what is happening on this campus and around the state and around the nation and really around the world and that they can be instructed and inspired in many ways to achieve things that they never thought possible. I am grateful to her and to all of the women at UVU and to all of the men at UVU, the women in the Success Center and women who have done so much to daily make practical differences in the lives of hundreds and hundreds, even thousands of women in this valley. And I also want to pay a special tribute to someone else who has played a key role in all of this and who has been such a great example and a great strength to me, and that is to my husband, Matthew. One of the reasons that I have been able to do what I have done here at UVU and that I feel UVU has accomplished so much on all of these fronts is that these issues have also been a passion of Matt's. I still remember so distinctly one night when we were early on at the university and he came home looking really somber and really concerned because he just learned about the statistics of the low female participation and graduation rates at UVU. 
And I watched him that night, and from that night forward, work and worry and do all he could to make a difference for women in education. I've watched the joy that he experiences when he sees progress being made on that front, and I've also watched the deep frustration he feels when progress doesn't happen fast enough. He has given me, personally, so much support and encouragement to be involved in these projects that mean so much and that are so important to educating women and to helping them flourish. For Matt, as it is for me, this is very personal and very deep. And for that, I thank him for his example, the example that he's been to me, and for the way he's inspired me to be my very best and to make a difference where I could. I love him with all of my heart, and I love UVU, and I love all of you. And with that, I invite Matthew to come up and share some of his farewell thoughts with all of you about these vital issues. Thank you very much. Isn't she spectacularly awesome? <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a very a lucky man. And you're going to have to forgive us tonight. I mean, I think you've seen already. This is, this is pretty personal. Uh, we, we've, we've been in these settings before, and we've, we've given these talks, and it's been a little bit more about what the data tells us and where the research is and what's happening at the university. But... Uh, uh, as we find ourselves departing uh, and saying goodbye to this place and our kind of last chance to be here, it's, um, it's left us in this very sort of personal reflective mode. So uh, you got that from Paige and you'll get it from me now for, uh, for just a few minutes. Um, uh, but uh, I, I can't help, uh, I, wasn't, I wasn't even thinking about this until Paige started showing some of these pictures and talking about our kids. One of the other great lines from our Holland family experience has to do with that summer we were in England. And, uh, you know, Paige and I were so excited to go to England for the summer. We just thought this was a great opportunity. But somehow it seemed more exciting to us than our kids. <laughs> so we came home and announced to our kids that we're going to uh, England for the summer. And it was to be a big surprise announcement like, what? We don't want to go to England. <laughs> Uh, especially my sons who were like, we want to stay home and play football and be with our friends. And, and uh, it just had not gone off, over very well. And so we took them kind of kicking and screaming to this great educational experience. Um, and after about a week or so, it started to change after a few Yorkie cho chocolate bars and a few castle visits. And, and then uh, after a whole summer there, it had just gone great, and then the last day we were there with my young son, and we'd gone to this bakery, and we'd had a pastry, and we're walking down the street with the double-decker buses flying by, and the sun is out, and, and he looks up at me and said, Dad, I just had no idea how boring Orem was. So, <laughs> uh, so now I've got a bunch of international snobs at home, and... Uh, but see, you people know how exciting Orem is, and so you're here tonight experiencing the most exciting thing in this valley tonight. So uh, good for you. Um, so I want to just say, uh, mostly we're, we're, just, we're here to listen to Paige tonight, but um, uh, I've just kind of been reflecting uh, because of this event and, and something that happened over the weekend about the women uh, who have shaped my life. I know the, the theme for tonight is about strengthening your impact in the community. And I do have some, a few specific things I want to say, especially to, to, uh, to the younger women in the room who are sort of looking to, to develop and grow and, and, and uh, flourish into, uh, into a, uh, an, a mature woman who can really go have an impact in the community. Uh, but I, I know, uh, to the extent I've done anything good on this campus, uh, how much I owe uh, a number of women, well, actually a lot of women, but there, there are some in particular that, uh, that uh, we need to talk about. So, um, and those are not two of the women <laughs> that I want to speak about tonight. Please let me be clear about that. Uh, but here's one I want to speak about tonight. So I know she's embarrassed already, and, and Paige has already uh, uh, appropriately uh, made a fuss over her. But, 
but a lot of the reason that we're here tonight uh, is because of, of Susan and her leadership. Uh, she's not only a student of leadership, but she is a leader. She's an organizer and a voice for things that matter. And she had a very uh, you know, uh, powerful impact on me and upon Paige when we first got here. When Paige talks about um, that somber night I came home, uh, well, it was Susan that made me sad. Uh, so. <laughs> Uh, because she shared with me the data and, and kind of what the situation was. And I just knew instantly that was going to be something we would have to work on. And, um, and so I've benefited from her scholarship and then from her role as, a, as an organizer. I mean, uh, and you are all here tonight because of her leadership. I mean, this is just something that wasn't happening. And it didn't just happen by accident. It happened because Susan saw a need and a way to address it, and as a result, you're all here tonight. Uh, and so, yes, please, please, yeah. Uh, um, the other event I had uh, was over the weekend was, um, I can't figure out this stinking clicker. I've only been here nine years. Uh, <laughs> So um, this is uh, Jeanette Hales Beckham, and some of you uh, may know her. Uh, but um, I knew her when I was a teenager, and I just knew her. She was a mom who lived in the neighborhood. I knew her two daughters. Uh, I went to high school with them, and I was good friends with her two daughters. And I was always so impressed with them, and, and uh, we lived in the neighborhood, so occasionally you know, I'd end up at their home. And I was just always so impressed with her. She just seemed so um, sort of wise and dignified and uh, thoughtful about things. And that made an impression on me even when I was a teenager. Um, and then um, just as I was going into college, she had a tragedy happen. And her husband was diagnosed with cancer. And four weeks later, he passed away. Uh, not a lot of warning. And all of a sudden, here's this woman who's uh, been at home with her children and loved her life and been raising them, and now her husband's gone, and what does she do? And uh, what happened next was very interesting. She ended up running for the legislature. And uh, she told me just over the weekend as we were, we were at this event honoring her, she said, someone came to her and said, look, what are you going to do? Spend your time just being sad? Or do you want to spend your time channeling your energies into something positive? What do you think your husband would want to do? And what do you want to do? And she, she said that kind of flipped a switch for her. And so she ran for the legislature. Uh, and that wasn't anything she would have thought about doing. But again, in the spirit of what Paige said, uh, she had a good education behind her. Uh, and even though she hadn't used that a lot in a professional way, uh, she had continued to be a lifelong learner, it was a voracious reader and thinker. And so then all of a sudden, she finds herself thrust into the situation, and she's in the legislature and was immediately seen as a person of relevance and significance and impact. Now, she wasn't there very long, but in a short time, she really made a name for herself uh, as a legislator. Um, I, I think that's in no small reason that she was very shortly thereafter called to be uh, one of the general officers, uh, one of the general female officers for the LDS Church. And uh, so then, then she's thrust into an even greater leadership role. And one thing kind of led to the next, but it, it, it was all kind of connected to her level of preparation and some other things that I want to say about. Well, why, why am I talking about uh, her? Because when I uh, became uh, uh, president, um, or, or just before that, she was on the board of trustees and on the search committee. And she was the first person I went to talk to when I was thinking, well, is this a job I should look at? And she gave me such good advice that day. And it was very tricky because she was on the search committee. So she couldn't promise me a job even though she knew me and I think loved me. Uh, uh, and she'd known me since I was a teenager, but she didn't say, oh, Matt, this is it. I'm going to help engineer and it's going to be great and all that. She was just, she was appropriate and professional, but she just kind of said enough to say, you know, this is a great university and you're a, a good man and this is something you might want to look at. And 
uh, and then just from there uh, became from day one a kind of a, a coach and a mentor at some level and I think was um, influential in, in that decision and so um, anyway she's had a big impact her fingerprints are all over this university actually as a trustee so you think about the different roles she's played legislator uh, church leader uh, community advisor to a university um, and all of that something that not necessarily she was uh, she was planning on in life um, her colleague another uh, uh, colleague in the LDS church is Elaine Dalton and uh, I highlight her because she is the current chair of the Board of Trustees at Utah Valley University. So as I like to say, um, I'm here because Jeanette Beckham hired me and because Elaine Dalton hasn't fired me. Uh, <laughs> so these two women really are kind of the strong bookends of my administration and they have uh, mentored me and counseled me and supported me in profoundly powerful ways. And again, it was because they were prepared to do that. They had a good education. They had developed their skills as a community figure of influence and knew and had good judgment about things. And so um, I'm, I'm very grateful for them. Just a, a, a couple of other folks on the professional front and then a, folks, uh, a couple on the, on, the, on the personal front and then I'm, I'm wrapped up. So um, this is Liz Hitch. Uh, Liz is not from this area. She moved to this area to become a vice president, and she was the interim president uh, in, just before I got in, into office. And I was just reflecting the other day. Uh, she was so good. She had, so she'd been the interim president. She then comes back into a vice president role as I come in as the new president. Now, think about this for a minute. She's older than I am. She had a lot more experience than I did. She had sort of been the president. And here I come along as a brand new guy, uh, as, the, as the president. And in a lot of situations, that could have created maybe a rivalry or some competition or some sense of, uh, I don't know, something that wasn't very productive. And I never felt an ounce of that from her. From the day I stepped onto this campus, she was supportive. She was a good, honest, a direct counselor. She gave very candid feedback. I knew I was getting the straight dope from Liz. Uh, and, uh, and she became a very important ally and mentor to me, uh, even though effectively I was her boss. But we had developed this relationship where we were both advising and kind of counseling each other and it was just a very productive thing. And she really was the, kind of the, the key number two person uh, on, on the campus. Uh, and then uh, there's this wonderful character uh, who is here with us tonight, Linda Macon. Linda, will you raise your hand there? So, okay. Uh, so Linda was on, the, on my immediate staff and um, it took me about uh, 25 minutes uh, to figure out this was a well-placed woman to be on my staff because I, you know, I was new and I had all these questions like, well, I've got a budget question. Well, you'll want to talk to Linda. Okay, all right. I've got a policy question. Well, at policy, I'd talk to Linda about that. Uh, I got an HR. Well, maybe you should visit with Linda Macon about that. It's like, like six things in a row. It's like, well, Linda Macon will know basically everything in the world. So uh, go talk to uh, Linda about that. Uh, and, and, and again, you know, for her, I came in as a, as a new president. She didn't know me. I'm, I'm her new boss. And from day one, uh, she was there to support. And, and, and one of her great gifts is that she is what, you know, what we call sort of a proactive thinker and an anticipator. It may not be her exact role. It may not be what she's specifically assigned to do, but because she cares about UVU and wanted me to succeed, wanted the institution to succeed, she was, she's always thinking and always anticipating and saying, how could we do things better? Or how might we approach that? Uh, now, sometimes when people do that, they, you know, they have the tendency to want to run everything. And that was another great gift for Linda is she could see things, give the advice, but then recognize other people had their role to play moving forward. So uh, anyway, I don't get that many chances to do that. So would you join me in thanking Linda for her great uh, uh, role here? So.
If we had more time, I'd explain the wand and uh, the whole Princess Disneyland thing that's going on with Linda, but that's uh, another, another story. Anyway, I, I know we're running out of time here, so uh, of course, um, uh, the, the women in my life are not just professional women, obviously. Uh, my mother, uh, uh, some of you know, uh, is a well-known uh, character in this valley and in this state. Uh, and that's sort of a picture of her in a, in a role that many would be familiar with her. But this is how I know my mom. Um, she made me practice that violin every day. Uh, she rode me like a rented mule. Uh, <laughs> And, um, and I'm very grateful for it because she uh, taught me how to work. She taught me how to pursue good things that I wouldn't naturally be inclined to do. Uh, she uh, is as powerful an influence in my life as I have had. And so some of you may not go on into the professional world. Some of you may uh, just be at home or may be at home for a while, but don't underestimate that community impact of what you can do for your children, with your children, and what your children may grow up to do because of the role that you played and the values you instilled in them, that still remains as important as anything any of us do, man or woman, and I'm, I'm forever grateful. This is Joyce Nelson. She was my high school English teacher who had the courage to give me a D minus on a paper <laughs> my senior year. I'd never had, I don't think, anything close to a D. <laughs> But she knew I was capable of much more. And she gave me a D minus and marked that paper up with red, red ink and pulled me aside and she said, you can do better than that. And it was a pivotal moment uh, in, in my life. Uh, and then, of course, uh, uh, I'm in trouble now for showing this picture, but uh, uh, the, the love of my life, and you've seen uh, what, what she has done uh, with, uh, with, uh, with her life. Um, but again, I don't think Paige knew what she was getting into. Well, I, know she, I know she didn't know what she was getting into when she married me. Uh, but I, she certainly didn't anticipate being uh, the first lady of a university. But again, because she had prepared herself, because she had gotten that education, um, she, had, she had really you know, left herself ready to, to have an impact in many different ways. So next thing she knows, she's here and she's building homes, uh, Habitat for Humanity, getting involved in the community that way. She was becoming a public speaker, which you've seen on display tonight. Uh, she's become a fundraiser, and it's a little embarrassing that she's better at it than I am, and I'm supposed to be like the chief fundraiser here. Um, her greatest success was the first year we were here. She was critical to raising $3 million to build a new we care facility for young children, uh, which she uh, proudly cut the ribbon for. And I, I'm now going to really be in trouble for showing this scene from the we care center, the world's smallest toilet on our campus at the we care center. Um, but that was all a reflection of, of Paige's uh, great efforts. Um, let me finish on this slide, and I, I promise, I'm, I know I'm, I'm, I'm fouling you up already, but it's our last time, Susan, okay. Uh, so you've, you've heard a few things from me tonight uh, about uh, if you want to have impact, and these are women of impact, they certainly have impacted my life, and, and by virtue what I've done in, in the community, I attribute to their, their influence. But there are some common themes that you've heard. Education. You get as much schooling as you can get. You have to do something after high school. Uh, uh, college degree, two-year degree at least, I would say. Four-year degree, if at all possible. Graduate education, if that, if that can be done. But education is the great empowering vehicle of our age. And you need to be as serious about your education as you can possibly be. But other things you've heard, a work ethic. Every one of these women work very hard. They're not out trying to just figure out how to just to enjoy their life for the day. They're, they're really putting in the time and the effort. And sometimes it's early in the morning and late at night, and they're using their time well during the day, but that work ethic comes through. Uh, they have a vision. 
they can see that things can be changed and they want to they want to do something about it and and they are results oriented they're determined not just to see things and talk about things but to actually move the needle to say how do we make tomorrow better than today in a practical meaningful way how do we communicate about that some of them are great speakers some great writers some great social media folks some do all of that but you've got to be able to articulate your vision and your aims moving forward and then finally that's why i want to end with this picture you've got to genuinely care you've got to care about individuals you've got to appreciate that they may be different than you you've got to accept them in their difference You've got to care about groups and communities, but all real change for the good, I believe, is not so much a matter of this or your hands, but it's this. It's your heart. It's caring about people. It's caring about the right things and making a difference. And that's why I'm just most grateful of all for Paige and her example, because if there's a woman I know who cares about people, and the best things, it's my wife, Paige. And it's been our treat to be with you here as a partner tonight and at this university for the last nine years. So thank you very much.